Good afternoon, Raider Nation, and welcome to the Raider Nation podcast. I am your host, Raider Greg, and welcome to the post-Buffalo Bills game show. And this is a tribute to Leo and Sal of the Buffalo Bill podcast. And here you go, Sal Leo. Where's your team at now? That's what you get for having Willis McGahee be your spokesperson saying that Warren Sapp and Ted Washington better, quote-unquote, watch out for me. Well, we did watch out for you, and we watched out for you up to the tune of 50 stinking yards. Nice talking to you, Willis. See you later. Maybe in another game and another time, but not this time. The Oakland Raiders victorious over the Buffalo Bills in a commanding thrashing which was beautiful to see. Great to see this team, and I'm going to get into everything about this game in just a minute. Just have a couple of things I want to go over here for the fans. Lamont Jordan, AFC Player of the Week, deserved every bit of his 122 yards and three touchdowns, deservingly dominated the game, and it was beautiful to see Lamont run. He had some excellent runs. Now, Charles Woodson will be out from eight to ten weeks. I doubt seriously if Charles will don another silver and black outfit. But I'll get into that a little bit. It's part of the story in the podcast. Derek Gibson. He had surgery on his wrist to put pins in it, and that gets him about 8 to 10 weeks, possibly more. Uh, this injury is very very substantial, and for uh, somebody that's a defensive back, it's going to be tough for him to come back from this in that short time. I want to take this moment here to inspire the Raider Nation fans to visit the Raider Take. Uh, Sean, who is the author of the Raider Take, I saw him at the tailgate along with three incredibly dedicated Raider fans from Great Britain. Yes, from England. They flew from the U.K. to the Bay to see the Oakland Raiders completely demolish and dismantle the Buffalo Bills. It was great to see these three guys. If you check out my site, look at the video section. You'll see a video of these characters. They're awesome fans. Took them three years to save up to come to this game. That is the epitome and the definition of the Raider Nation. Worldwide, we're everywhere. And like I've said before, the most dedicated fans in the NFL, regardless of what our team is doing, where our record is, you can see, if you go to the games, there's no diminishing fan base, as some character in San Francisco was saying. You can see it on the, the video. Sean has a great take on him. The diminishing fan base of the Oakland Raiders. Baloney. We're everywhere. We're worldwide. And people come from far away, just like these two guys, these three guys, to see their Oakland Raiders. And they represented us like they do in England because they get the games there live, which is a wonderful thing, I will tell you right now. So let me talk about Charles Woodson here for a minute because I like Charles. I've always liked Charles Woodson. There's been a lot of controversy about Charles and the money he's made. He's made some ugly money, that's for sure. But he's played well, too. You know, I just sad to see that his, his uh, I guess his place in history won't be solidified like a Cliff Branch or a Willie Brown because he just never came up to that level. We didn't win the Super Bowl, which you know in itself brings your name up to a higher point in all stats among history of the NFL. Charles had great games and he had good games. Uh, he's, he, I don't remember too many terrible games. You know, This would go along with the way the team has been playing in the last three years. But not Charles' fault. And you know, Charles was honest to a fault, you know, speaking about it. He never held anything back. Callahan heard it firsthand from him. It was good to hear someone in the locker room being totally honest because Callahan surely wasn't honest while he was a short term coach for our one year, actually our two years. <clears throat> Excuse me. So. Charles Woodson, like I said, I like the guy. I like his play. I love his tackling. Probably the best tackler we've ever had. And I know people are going to be ripping me for saying that, but I think he was an excellent tackler. Got his guy 99.9% .9 of the time. Now, Woodson, $8.7 million in 02, 
$10.5 million in 04. That gives him that kind of money for 19 games. That's $19 million for 19 games. That's a million cool dollars per game. And I will tell you this, that would be a nice money to make if it were me. Because I know Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal, Peyton Manning, and A-Rod, all three are envious of this guy because he is making some ducats. But he has played very well, especially when he's been inspired to play. Now, this is the fourth season ending or season... <clears throat> I won't say ending, but physical setback, let me just say that, that he's had in his eight-year career. And this is the second fracture he's had on the same leg. I really doubt it seriously if Charles is going to be coming back to the Oakland Raiders. But I just wanted to say a little bit about this guy. He has had great pro productivity, and when he wants to be, he's probably the best corner in the, in the league. His tackling is awesome, like I said. And he is probably the best strip artist in the NFL, bar none. He strips the ball better than anybody else. He's brutally honest in the locker room. And I've always liked Charles. I just wanted to say that because I don't believe Charles is coming back. I know there's going to be a lot of fans that are happy about it. I'm particularly not happy about it. However, that's football, and that's what happens. He will be a free agent next year with a $30 million over-the-cap hit, well, what else do I need to tell you other than he's going to be, you know, a victim of that, along with other people, too. I'm, I'm not even going to get into that right now because I don't want to depress everybody because I'm depressed just thinking about it. So here's to you, Charles. Hope you feel better. Hope you get well. Get well soon, brother. And thank you for playing for the Raiders because I think you did a pretty doggone good job myself. Okay. The game. The game against the Bills. I will tell you that all three phases played very well. I was impressed. The first initial drive of the game was concerning because the Bills just came right down the field and scored. We, I was concerned. Everyone else in the stands was very concerned. But Rob Ryan, he turned it around. He turned it around rather quickly. They did a lot of plays in the first drive that were not expected. There's a lot of trick things in there that they put in that they didn't repeat and they couldn't repeat after that because Rob Ryan had it on. He did a great job of coaching. I have to say that right now. The defense did an extremely good job, especially by losing Woodson in the first quarter. Our young guys stepped up big time. Fabian Washington, Riddle, even Chris Carver's back there making it happen. And that was a great thing to see. They're going to have to step up big for Tennessee, too. But the game after that's going to be brutal. We got Kansas City at their house. We're going to have to be ready to play. Okay, Collins, most impressive showing all season long. And I said it before in the other podcast that I did, the pregame, that Collins would probably have a better game because Moss wasn't in the game. I think the stress factor of having to throw the ball to Moss keeps him off his game. And when Randy Moss was in the, only in there for a very short time, he did get some balls. But after that, the balls are spread out all over the field. And I think that was a very key thing. Even, even Zach Crockett got one out of the back. And that's one thing I noticed about this game that didn't happen in the previous games is Collins actually dumped the ball off when he had pressure, got the pass completed, and we made some great yardage. That's something that we need to continue. The other thing Collins did, which was great, was he ran the ball. He even made a first down. That was very impressive. I've never seen him so cool in the pocket. Uh, we were, you know, the fans were a little irritated after that first drive. And let, they let the Raiders know it like they do, of course, at the Coliseum. Don't hold anything back over there. And Collins really felt it, I think, and came out playing great. Now, let me just say one thing. Doug Gabriel is the man. And a Porter was good. You know, everybody got a couple of hits, and that was good to see. I would love to have seen Courtney Anderson a little bit more involved. However, that's the way it goes. You can't complain when you get a 38-point victory. Now, the key thing here, too, was the running game. The offensive line did an extremely good job. And after the half, man, they were tired. Not, not our offensive line, but their defensive line was beat down hard. And Lamont got some great holes and did a great job. 
and our running game was stellar. We'd like to see some more of that, but I think the fact that Collins himself was contained, didn't throw the ball out, but maybe twice in the whole game, those kind of things make a huge difference and make all the difference, actually, when it comes to winning the game. Collins, got to give a thumbs up to you. I've been ripping you lately, but this was your game. I don't know what Turner did. I don't know what he talked to, he talked to, but he did coach a very good game. I was very surprised to see the type of plays that were getting called out there. Um, it was very good. It was aggressive, and I loved the fact that we stepped on their throat and grounded into the, the ground their face into the turf. I love to see it. When we get an opportunity to do that, it's good for the team, and it's actually great for the fans. The Raider defense. Kept Willis, Big Mouth, McGahee off the field. Kept him to 50 yards. Shut his, I'm going to, they have to worry about me action right down. And at the end, we used Crockett to put the exclamation mark on the victory with Crockett's history-making stance. When he goes through the end zone, he whips his hands up there in that high step. It's a beautiful thing. And the crowd went berserk as they do. I love Zach. I love his intensity. He is one of my all-time favorite running backs. I always have. He's a class act, and I'm so glad to call him a Raider. If there's one thing I have to say about the game, however, that was concerning, it was our kicker, Jankowski. Not, excuse me, Janikowski. I've been corrected before. Not the fact that he didn't make his field goals <clears throat> or his extra points, but he, this Polish cannon is not getting the ball into the end zone on the kickoff. That is hurting us. When the ball lands between the 15 and 20 yard line, that gives the run back. If it's a 10 yard run back, they start on the 25, 35, 40 yard line. That is a big place to start. That gives our defense a real bad time when we get the opposition to be coming up that far into the field and luckily for us the Bills don't have a real good return man but Kansas City when we go play them they better be ready because the Polish cannon better be kicking that ball into the stands because we can't have that guy run the ball back it hurt us last time in the game and it's going to hurt us again when we play any quality teams so it really bothers me that Janikowski is not getting that ball all the way in for the touchback he has improved, but I will tell you, that is the biggest thing I saw in this game is field positioning the starting offense, big time. And let's talk about something else here. So I'm thumbs up on this game. It was a great game to see. Uh, Leo and Sal from the Buffalo Bills podcast, well, right back at you, fellas. So much for the black hole being, you know, a, a hole. So much for Oakland being a place you have to watch your back. Because I'll tell you right now, there were three-year-old kids wearing the Buffalo Bills outfit, Leo and Sal. And I didn't see any trouble there. There's two girls sitting in front of me. They had Bills outfits on. What's up with you and your leather jacket? Grab some sack, Patna. Okay, defensive backs. Calvin Branch has been signed to the active roster. He's been with the Raiders since 1997. And he's... Last game he played, actually, was against the Titans, who we're going to play next Sunday. So he should be ready to go because that's his last game. The elder statesman now is Nasambi Asamoa, who actually has improved his play quite a bit. He stepped it up real big time, and I'm really impressed with his play. Stuart Swaggart, excellent. Chris Carr has actually been playing in the back, defensive back position, and I think he'll be really good with his speed. The only thing I'm concerned about with Chris Carr is his height. With these big receivers in the NFL now, these guys that are six foot six that jump up and get the ball, that's the only problem I have with Chris Carr. However, size have never meant anything to a real, true athlete. Because I'll tell you what, Ronnie Lott was no six six, but he put the hurt on you. And let me tell you, you didn't want to go anywhere where Ronnie Lott's neighborhood was because he put the tattoo on you, and you'd keep that tattoo forever, no doubt. Jared Cooper, I love this guy. He's probably the funniest guy on the team. He's a good guy. He's going to be playing safety, and I think he'll have it. I believe the defensive backs can do very well against Tennessee. I think uh, I'll, on my pregame show I'll go over why. Uh, now, 
McNair is going to come back this game. He's been off for several weeks. He's been hurt before. He's been hurt. But, you know, this guy can come back and hurt you. So with McNair back in the scheme of things, and they're hurt and they're 2-5, and five, I'll go over some more of that in the pregame show for the Titans. So Raider Nation, I just want to tell you again to check out my site, www.raidernation.com. And I just want you guys to check it out because i got an awesome video of the Brits on there. I got Sean from the Raider Take. He's on there. Check out our site. Check out the video. It is awesome. I think you'll enjoy it, especially for those fans who are displaced Raider fans from across the country. You guys get on there and check the video out because it shows the tailgate there at the Coliseum, Raider Mecca, for all you fans who are in hostile territory. I want to thank you for all of you for your support and your votes, continuing votes on the podcast alley, which I continue to need. If you get on there, please click and pick. Check my site out because I could use your votes to keep Raider Nation Podcast number one in podcasting in the sports category because we don't want to be anything but number one. So until the pregame of the Titans, this is the Raider Nation Podcast. I am Raider Greg, and I am out.